Hello and welcome to an Envato Test Plus tutorial. I'm Adi Pordula. And in today's video, uh, we're going to start exploring the world of SVG filters. With these, you can create unique text effects, image effects, and with a little JavaScript, very interesting contraptions like this uh, dynamic fractal effect. Now, uh, these examples are a little bit extreme. There's a lot going on there. In this tutorial, we'll keep things much simpler and explore the basics of working with SVG filters. Here's what we'll cover. First, we'll learn what are SVG filters and how they're different from CSS filters. Then we'll use the filter element and learn about filter primitives while building two simple demos. And finally, we'll check out the browser support. So what exactly is an SVG filter? Well, to understand that, let's start with CSS filters. As you might know, in CSS, we have certain functions we can use to add blur, drop shadows, and also do color operations like um, change the hue, saturation, brightness, and so on. These are mostly applied to images and are called CSS filters. We have 11 of them, and uh, they're past to an element by using the filter function. We've already covered these in a variety of content here at Tuts Plus. Just follow the written version of the tutorial and you'll find links to those courses and tutorials where we've used uh, the different techniques. Now, uh, CSS filters are pretty limited because you'll mostly use them on images and even then their functionality is pretty basic. If you want more functionality or a more complex functionality, we need to use SVG filters. And here's the interesting part. CSS filters are a subset of SVG filters, which have been around since 2007. The difference is the CSS ones are easier to use and simpler in functionality. For example, in CSS, we can blur images, but the blur is uniform, the same amount in all directions. In SVG, on the other hand, we can do the same blur, but with different values for the X and Y axis, and also with an edge mode, which allows us to fine tune how the blur is applied around the edges of the image. Now, you might think that SVG filters are only for SVGs. That's not true. They can be applied to any HTML element, as we'll discover in just a little bit. Um, now, to create these, we start with the filter element and with special functions that are called filter primitives. To get started, you need to create an SVG and define a filter element inside that. Don't forget to add an ID so we're able to reference this later on. Then inside that element, we need to add the primitives, the individual functions that give us the result we need. Finally, we create the elements we want to apply the filter to. We use the filter attribute and we reference the ID we created earlier. There are 17 primitives we can use today. Here's the full list. And uh, notice the FE prefix on all of them. That stands for filter effect. These primitives allow us to create simple effects like blur and drop shadows, but also Photoshop grade effects like blending modes, compositing, displacement maps, and more. Now, let's code some SVGs and see how to apply these effects. We start with an SVG element to which we're going to apply a width let's say 1000 and a height 577. I'm doing this uh, on purpose because I have an image of these dimensions. And for the view box, well, we'll just create one that, that matches 00 and 1557. Okay. Next, we need to create a filter element and we'll give this one an ID. Let's call it demo filter. And inside, we're going to add the filter primitives. But first, we need an element to apply this filter to. So we're going to create an image, and I'm just going to load 
an image that I uploaded here from uh, Unsplash. And let's also set a width 100%, a height 100%, and also some uh, X and Y coordinates so we uh, specify where the image is starting from. In my case, 0, 0 is starting from the top left. And then we're going to say filter, URL, demo filter. Right? So currently we cannot see the image any longer because it has this filter applied to it and the filter is blank. So let's go ahead and add some primitives. Uh, what I would like to do in this one is apply first a color, an overlay color, and then do a blending mode. So the first primitive to add a color is called FE, filter effect, flood. So FE flood, this is actually self-closing, so we don't need that. We can see that the image is now black. We can specify a flood color, and let's say 2D A0FB, so it's just a blue color. We can also specify a flood opacity, and that's going to be equal to 1, which is 100%, but we can make this transparent if we want. And next, we're going to define a result. And in uppercase, we're going to say flood. Now, here's the thing with result. These primitives can be combined. And to combine them, I can use the result attribute to define or to set an ID here. I can then use this ID as an entry for another primitive, as you'll see in just a little bit. So the next step is to add a blending mode. So for that, we're going to use the FE blend primitive. So FE blend. Now here, in this particular instance, we can have two sources because we're going to combine these two and we're going to apply a blend mode. We're going to say in source graphic. And source graphic basically means this image right here. It's the element that we're applying the filter to. In two, this is the second source, we're going to say flood. So I'm using th the same name that I got from the result here to add it here. And then I'm going to say mode color burn. There are a lot of different uh, blending modes you can choose from. I chose color burn just to uh, show you the, um, the effect that we're getting. And here I can also say result equals blend. Now the uppercase notation isn't necessary. This is just something uh, I do to be able to distinguish these values from other values I might use on other attributes. So I always know that uppercase is either a result or an in in this case. So that's all there is to it really. It's that easy to use SVG filters. You define a filter element, you define your primitives, and then you apply the filters to your element using URL demo filter. So that was a pretty basic example. Let's, uh, let's make another one. Again, let's start with an SVG element. And inside we'll do a filter. Let's give this an ID of text stroke. Inside, we're going to use a um, primitive called FE morphology. This basically allows us to uh, shrink or dilate an element. And it works really well on text as well. So I can say FE morphology. This is also self-closing. And I can specify my operator equals dilate. And this will basically expand. And I can specify an amount in the form of the radius attribute. Let's say 10. In let's say the source graphic which we haven't defined yet but we will and the result let's say thickness okay now let's define our source we're going to use an h2 this time so a regular html element and we're going to say whatever you do do it well and this is actually co a quote from walt disney we do have to write a little bit of CSS here. And I just added some um, like demo styles 
a little, of, uh, a little bit of color on the body, setting display flex so I can uh, align this. I'm using a custom font from Google. It's called Barrio. I'm just setting on the H2 a font size, letter spacing, line height, and I'm doing a little bit of a rotation counterclockwise to minus 10. And I'm just setting a text color. Now, the effect that we want to create here is that of a uh, stroke. So we want to stroke around our individual letters. And also we want to have the insides transparent, okay, like this inside of the O here, the inside of the, of the D. So we just want the outline of the text. Now, normally, you could achieve roughly a similar effect with the text stroke property. And that text stroke property goes uh, something like this, you would do the color, first of all, transparent. And then you would say, WebKit, because this is still under a prefix, text stroke, and you put in the amount of stroke, let's say 10 pixels and the uh, the color that you want, which in our case is the same one. So you can achieve something like this, which is not necessarily the uh, the best result. Now instead, we can use an SVG filter. So here I'm going to say filter URL, this is how you define it in CSS, and you just say the ID of the filter. In our case, it's text stroke. So notice what that did. It applied basically this morphology primitive with the operator of dilate. So it basically um, thickened the letters, and you can control how much with this radius attribute. Okay, so let's keep it at 10. And what we want to do now is actually cut out the middle of the letters and just leave the stroke. And we can easily do that with a primitive called composite. So fe composite, we can specify in, which is going to be thickness, which is this one. And in two is going to be our source graphic. And now to make the magic happen, we just say operator equals out. And that will basically cut away the inside and just leave us with our thickness, our stroke. And then you can go ahead and play around with the radius here to make this thicker or thinner. It really depends on the uh, effect that you want to get out of it. All right, and those are two very simple examples of what you can do with SVG filters. Now, what about browser support? Surprisingly, SVG filters have better browser support than their CSS counterparts, as you can see from these charts. With that said, keep in mind that browsers might render some of these effects differently. And there might also be a difference between how a filter is applied to an SVG, as opposed to how it's applied to an HTML element. But overall, browser support is pretty good. Now, this concludes our uh, short journey into the world of SVG filters. Um, we barely scratched the surface here. There's just so much you can do with these because you can combine these primitives. Uh, you can achieve some really amazing effects. And I invite you to uh, check out the written version of the tutorial. I included some resources that will help you uh, understand even more about these, uh, these filters. Uh, a very useful one is the SVG Filters Playground by Yoxel. Uh, you can really experiment and play around with it to discover how the different primitives work individually or combined. So uh, definitely give that a go. With that said, thank you very much for watching. I'm Adi Pordillo, and until next time, take care.